Hey guys, welcome back to my wood shop and today we're going to make the easiest DIY project that even a dumb stupid idiot could make even if they were brain dead from getting in a car crash when they were 17 because they were drinking and driving and that's not cool. But even they, they don't have the use of their hands or their legs but they could still make this DIY project. So it is an inverted herringbone a tabletop made with a, a fucking, uh, shit, what's it called? <laughs> what's it called? I'm going to Google it. Reclaimed wood? No. Pallets! Fuck! It's an inverted herringbone style table made with the Japanese style of wood. Uh, pallet wood. Recycled, reclaimed furniture wood. And because of that, it's really going to keep the cost down low. We're talking about less than seven cents. That's right, seven cents for this table. Um, it is going to be hanging from my ceiling directly onto the ground. That does require some welding, but luckily for you, I have all the welding materials. You are going to need only three tools. One welder, a circular saw, and then um, an entire workshop full of uh, $15,000 worth of tools. So hopefully that works out for you guys. And we're going to DIY this bitch. Okay guys, so like I said, welcome back to my workshop. We're going to be making the, the, the feng shui style table here. So luckily for you, I already did this part. I joined these bad boys. You got the crank hole, the, the jigs, you get the wood glue. I use type on four or some shit. I don't know. Toss that bad boy on the ground. Um, and as you can see, it's perfectly level. Get out of here, strap. I always, always stay strapped. That's what I always say. Anyway, perfectly level. That's good stuff. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take out your hex key set. Um, this is the 14 millimeter one. You're just going to toss that bad boy on there. Okay, make sure. Okay, then you got to get your belt sander loop. Um, this is the KX167. Uh, this is 80 grit, 80 ply, I believe is what it's called. Great for your ass, great for your face. Throw that bad boy on there. Okay, then you want to make sure the wood's nice and clean. Now, this is simple green all-purpose cleaner. You can f pick this up at your local Ace Hardware. Now, that's really just going to freshen up the wood, really bring out the grain, the imperfections of this pallet wood. Now, you might be saying, where'd you get this pallet wood? Craigslist, you fuckers. Come on, guys. Just think about it. Okay, then we're going to come over here. Now you're going to get your copy of Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. Um, this did win the Pulitzer Prize. Toss that shit in there. That's going to be the structure, really the base, if you will, of the table itself. Um, it is going to be hanging from the ceiling. Now get your clamp. Get your other clamp. And just clamp this, this bad boy together here. Okay, so... And it should work just like that. And there you have it, folks. Okay. Now that you're done with that, where's your stud finder? Oh, stud finder, am I right, guys? <laughs> okay. That looks pretty good there. Always keep your tape measure around. Remember what they say, just like my grandpa said. Measure twice, cut once. Um, don't tell your grandmother. Yeah, that's looking really good. Okay, what else do you need? Oh man, I gotta consult my plans. Now, you probably have this laying around. Um, this is uh, the finish, it's called a, a breeze block. I want to share your mouth full. No, wait, fuck, that's not breeze block. Anyway, uh, throw your old J on there and then get your duct tape. As we know, hey, duct tape solves everybody's problems. Am I right, boys? <laughs> You know, they say silence is golden, but duct tape silver. You guys ever watch that episode of Mythbusters where they make a boat out of duct tape? This is even better than that shit. Suck a dick, Adam Savage. All right, that's good. And there you have it, folks. I mean, that just really, I, I don't even have anything else to say. Thanks for watching. Drop, drop, drop the subscription. Hit that like button. You can probably hear my furnace in the background. So, uh, hey, I'm um, drinking. <coughs> uh, let it be known that the only reason why I am drinking is because I just recorded this video and I was done with it. And then I went to transfer it from my camera to my computer 
using my lovely piece of shit card reader and uh, it busted my SD card, so I had to format it, thus losing the footage that I had just recorded. I've been trying to find new hobbies because I work from home because of the coronavirus, and because of that, I spend a lot of time in my house. So I've been trying to find ways to uh, break up the days, do something new, rather than just play video games. I've been trying to make more YouTube videos. I've been trying to hang out with my dogs more. I've been trying to go on more runs. I've been trying to find things to, you know, keep keep life moving on. One of the things that I've gotten a little bit into is some like DIY home woodworking kind of stuff. So I'm not doing anything hardcore, but what I am doing is I want to, you know, find projects that are useful for around our house, learn how to build those things and then build them. Save us some money, give me something to do, something to make me feel accomplished and not like I'm slowly losing my fucking mind because I'm always at home. You know, things like that. Um, so I started to get into those. I, I built a bed frame for our bed. I built an end table. I built a desk. It's right here. You probably can't see it, but I built it. So things like that, I'm gonna build a, a bench, just small projects. And because of this, I often turn to YouTube. Now YouTube is obviously a way that a lot of people learn how to do things, right? Everything from like video game walkthroughs to DIY projects around your house to fixing your car. I learn all these things from YouTube uh, or the internet in general, but most of the time it's, it's YouTube. Great, I love it, right? But I've noticed a trend specifically in woodworking tutorials on the internet. And that's this idea of presenting something as a DIY project. It's so easy. Anybody can do it. When in reality, what you actually need is like a massive collection of tools, oftentimes that are very expensive and sometimes can take up large amounts of space that a lot of people don't have and then additionally uh, you need years of experience and know-how to operate those tools and to make sure that you're doing things correctly right which is kind of the definition of a professional my dog's barking in the background what an asshole it's the definition of a professional not so much the definition of an amateur which is what I imagine a DIY video should be I'm thinking of an example uh, oh, hey, look at that it's the example so this guy was making a desk. I was watching it because I was also making a desk. He was using something called castle joints, which are really cool. You use a four x four and you cut it into these, these the little oblong shaped things so that the pieces can all slide together. And he started off the video and he was like, you only need three tools. You need a circular saw and a jigsaw and a great attitude. I don't remember what the tools were. And then right away, it like hard cuts to him like using a fucking planer and then using a, a belt sander and using, you know, all these different tools that weren't included in his three tool list. I built this whole project with just a circular saw, jigsaw, and some hand tools, and I can't wait to show you how. A few moments later. They came relatively rough from the mill, so I ran them through the thickness planner to clean up each face and remove the rounded corners. For this glue up, I'm using Maker Brand T-Bar clamps, which are from my company Maker Brand. Then I got that belt sander and I started working side to side. A so a lot of these like DIY home project channels, they present things as like, anybody can do this. When in reality, it is so much more difficult than that, okay? For me, the channels that I appreciate the most are the ones where it's like a dad, right? Who, just like me, is not a professional, who doesn't really know what they're doing, but they have in taken on this endeavor, taken on this project, to try and do it and to try and learn something and to do their best. So they're making a video to chronicle that journey. Do I want to make videos like that? Not at all. Is it cool that somebody else is going to do that um, and take it from like a true DIY amateur perspective? Yeah, that's cool because what it ends up being for a lot of these videos is these people that are professional word workers have done it for years and years and years and they're saying like easy DIY project for under $50 and in reality like nobody can do this shit for under $50 because you need $10,000 worth of tools and a fucking workshop, 35 clamps and a joiner and a fucking biscuit cutter and like all this shit that nobody has uh, to make what they're actually trying to make. So they're like, 
easy concrete countertops. And then it's like super fucking hard. Easy epoxy tabletop. And it's super fucking hard. And I think that's the nature of these things, is that some of these things are difficult to do, which is why there's people that get paid a lot of money to do them. There's some things that you probably want to pay for rather than try to do it yourself. By making these videos, these people are tricking people into thinking, I can do those concrete countertops, when in reality, a lot of people probably can't. Right? Some people probably can and probably made their own concrete countertops and it was a fucking breeze and they were like, whatever, who cares? Some people probably made their live edge epoxy river top coating fucking whatever table and it probably looked awesome. But most people can't do that. So they're presenting it as like, this is what DIY is, is these like super intense, super high level projects um, that are expensive, that are hard to make, that take a really long time. When in reality, the DIY spirit should be like making really simple, easy things to try and get somebody into that hobby. It's really easy to look at those projects and be like, Jesus fucking Christ, there's literally no way that I could ever do something like that and get turned off from the idea of, of making these projects. My end table kind of looks shitty, but I'm happy with it because I built it myself. My bed frame is weird as hell and you can see the joist hangers that I used like all over it. But I'm proud of it because I built it myself. That should be the spirit of a DIY video and these wood shop, wood making project tutorial whatever. Not this idea of like, I'm going to show you how to make the most complicated edge joining construction ever. I hate that. I hate when people are like, Oh yeah, like just go down and get the lumber from your local store knowing that like the only stores that most people are going to go through are what like Home Depot, Lowe's, and then maybe like a lumber place near you, you know, like a local lumber place. Um, and they always end up with like the most beautiful lumber in the videos. You know, it's like perfect. And then when I go to Lowe's, the lumber is like utter, total shit trash. <laughs> And it's like, I sort through like 400 two by fours and they're all like crooked or have like chunks missing or, you know, shit like that. And they're just like, yeah, just like go down and pick up the lumber from the store. I paid $1.25 for each two by four, which is how I kept this project under $15 to build a, a fucking bookshelf. And it's like, what are you talking about? What world do you live in? I don't mean to sound dramatic or to complain all the time. There's plenty of people that make really cool projects on the internet and show you how to do it and, and are really accommodating to beginners or people that are medium stages who are advanced. And I really appreciate those people. I don't mean to like come down on everyone and be like, everyone who makes shit on the internet fucking sucks. But there are a lot of people that do. So anyway, this is me complaining about it. That's all I gotta say. I'm glad I got to say that again twice. It's, you know, gotta get all riled up. Thanks for watching. Bye.